<clears throat> so when I need even momentarily to be freed of the world and its demands and to feel like I need to be wrapped in love, the quickest, easiest way for me to do that is just get a bowl of cereal. Um, if I want to be more extravagant, I might go locally to uh, the Hart House, which uh, some of you may frequent, and there, there's so much comfort food on the menu. Um, shepherd's pie, not something I cook at home, but I, it's the, one of the first things that catches my attention on their menu. Anything having to do with mashed potatoes. I'm talking comfort food. Comfort food is that food, usually high, by the way, in salt, fat, sugar, carbohydrates. It's the food that gives us some consolation, sense of well-being, that often actually is associated with, with childhood um, and home cooking. And uh, it gives us, even if short-lived, a sense of freedom. As I say, sort of, you want to just step away from the world. It's commands, it demands on you, and, and, and just give me a break. I need a little comfort. I need, to, I need to feel like I belong. And just wrap me up in a little, in a, in a little love right now. So comfort food does that. And, and, and that's why we go to it again and again and again and again. And so it, it has a way of satisfying within us this need. We have a desire to meet a need deep within us for a sense of freedom and a sense of belonging. But comfort food is short-lived. Jesus turns to these folks who have chased him down, and he says, I know what you're looking for. Um, you, you're coming for this food. You, you got your fill. But I'm, I'm telling you, don't get all worked up about that food which perishes, which is short-lived, sort of comfort food. Um, I can give you food that will give you that sense of, of freedom and belonging that will last. And they go, that food, that food we'd like, you know. Sir, give us that kind of bread. And he said, well, I am the bread of heaven. I am that bread which kind of stops things right there. What does that mean? In the course of COVID, because we've been celebrating the Eucharist, but there's been no one in the pews to give, distribute that communion to, I've had a lot of bread back there. Um, not just bread, I've had the body of Christ bread, the bread of heaven bread, and I've been wondering what to do with it. And so on more than one occasion, I put it in a bag, precious little bag. I think this is, I've, I've got to be real careful with this. And um, I've taken it home. And I suppose I could in my, you know, in this thought that, oh, bread of heaven, I can snack on this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get what, what Jesus promises. I'm going to get this sense of my, my deepest human, spiritual, profound, at the core need to be free and to belong, Jesus promises that I can, I can eat. He is the bread of life. I can eat these wafers and I'll be fine. No, actually, no. I think the most that these wafers can do is give us a little grace. That we can't see, and, and, and we say that's an outward invisible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, and it doesn't have to come through a wafer. There are sacraments all over. You don't have to be an Episcopalian or Roman Catholic. You don't even have to be Eucharistically bent. There are ways of tasting a little grace in your life. And when we get a little of that, especially, I would say, through the wafer, through the communion, we're, we're not take, we are, in a sense, taking Jesus within us. A wild animal hunts down a wild living animal. They won't eat something dead. They, they want to eat that which is alive because it seems to me they want to take within themselves what they see as alive, and they need that in themselves. There's some extent that eating Jesus, that weird, metaphorical, often too literally interpreted, cannibalistic approach, that, that wanting to take Jesus into us is not just taking something with us. It's actually an invitation to enter into a little more deeply his life. 
how he saw things, what he believed, what he felt, his, how he lived, how he breathed, how, and when you, it's the way of his being, it's the way he lived his life, and when we taste that, when we move into and it's actually experience how he lived, then we begin to get this enduring sense that isn't short-lived comfort food, that this enduring sense of freedom and belonging, wonderful combination. So again, begs the question, how does that happen? And Paul's insights in this section from Ephesians, which is timeless, and it's, it's, it's so, there's the one line that he says, now, children, <laughs> Don't be, don't be like children tossed to and fro by doctrine. And, you know, basically, and he's not being, you know, judgmental or unkind, but he's saying, be at liberty to grow up. And, and it is an example of, of coming into your own, into the full stature of Christ. Dare to gently, lovingly speak truth to the people around you. That's not easy. And, and if you've been in, a, and we all have, in, in a moment when you're called to say something to someone, maybe a family member, a spouse, or, or a stranger, and, you're, and you feel the need to speak truth, and, and you hold back, you're, you're bound up, you're not yet free. But speaking truth in love is a great example of how we are to live our lives at all times and all places, always bringing to the moment all of who you are, bringing to the moment all of who you are that is required that if, if you are going to speak truth in love and not hurt somebody, not turn them away, but be able to, and it, and it always feels like something new and fresh. And that begins for me to name what it's like to live in the way of Jesus, to, be give, to give yourself the freedom to bring your whole self to that moment in order to say, share a word of truth. And if you do it with love, there's the freedom and a sense of belonging that comes with. Suddenly, you, you're, you're part of the human race. You, you've spoken up, you've arrived, you've, you've made yourself known. There's a freedom in that. And, and with it comes a feeling of belonging to something larger and greater than yourself. And every time you do that, that feel, feeling of freedom and belonging only grows stronger. And no one can take it away from you. That, for me, begins to touch on what he is saying, that he does offer this bread of life. But don't think for a moment that it's, it's as easy as, oh, thank you, and I'm just going to put this in my pocket and be gone. I think the biggest stumbling block in Christianity is thinking that Jesus is someone we can just admire and worship and kind of keep in our pocket and maybe have a little of him on Sunday. The truth of the matter is he, he was a way. He lived in a way that exuded a sense of freedom and a sense of belonging. Wherever he went, he was a free man. And wherever he went, no matter how far he went from home, he, wherever he was, he fully, fully belonged. That combination drew people to him. How, what, I, I want to taste that. I want to taste that. And he said, well, I am the bread of life. Get a taste of this. May we never, ever, ever lose a craving for true freedom, for true belonging that we see in this one, Jesus.